तस् भगवत अर्हत सुद्ध नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सुद्ध नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सुद्ध so uh, the sutta i am uh, first uh, sharing is from samyutta nikaya this is 1.38 i have shared the link uh, in, in the uh, in the chat so uh, that is the uh, first sutta we will be reading uh, and the, the name of the sutta is the stone split uh, splinter now uh, as you know uh, that uh, i just uh, start reading thus have i heard on one occasion the blessed one was dwelling at rajagaha in madha kuchi deer park now on that occasion the blessed one's foot had been cut by a stone splinter uh, so now uh, as you know that uh, uh, there were there was an attempt on buddha's life by his uh, cousin devadatta now what he did was he uh, hurled his uh, boulder while buddha was doing his walking meditation and uh, when the boulder went down uh, it got split into two and the buddha uh, it did not touch the buddha but there was a small stone out of that which uh, hit the ground and a splinter uh, hit the buddha's uh, toe and there was bleeding uh, and uh, the buddha got injured in that so uh, that that uh, refers to this thing but i i i find this part more interesting after this severe pains assailed the blessed one bodily feeling that were painful racking sharp piercing harrowing disagreeable but the blessed one endured them mindful and clearly comprehending without becoming distressed then the blessed one had his outer robe folded in four and he lay down on his right side in the lion posture with one leg overlapping the other mindful clearly comprehending so one thing we have to uh, kind of uh, uh, be sure uh, is that uh, when uh, we are talking about the buddha uh, he has uh, no uh, kind of control over the body uh, thing if a body uh, part has been uh, hit there is pain which comes but what he uh, has done uh, buddha after uh, enduring this is that he endured them mindful and clearly comprehending and without becoming distressed this also is mentioned in another uh, sutta where the buddha says that when you have a arrow uh, which has been uh, hit say uh, as an example uh, in the leg the pain of the arrow is the pain itself but all the things which we get distressed why was why was it me uh, uh, when will this stop and all those things i want uh, this to uh, not pain those kind of uh, thoughts which are there those are the second uh, arrow which we uh, ourselves uh, inflict on our our own uh, mind and this is the dukha the pain is not dukha pain is just the pain but when we are uh, uh, we are opposing that what is there the painful feeling that is when we are creating dukha the uh, bante also says that if there is a something which is there and you are opposing it the opposing part is the pain so if there is a cold and we don't like the cold then it will be dukha for us and there is another per person in the room who likes a cold weather then for him it will not be a dukha so that cold itself or the heat would not be the dukha or the pain would not be the dukha but our opposing to it so buddha is kind of uh, pointing out over here uh, or uh, we are coming to know that he is uh, not a kind of uh, uh, over the physical feelings but uh, uh, he uh, will not have the mental feelings because he will be mindful and he will be clearly comprehending what is happening means he will realize that it arises it stays and it will go away the pain so he is uh, clearly comprehending and then he does not become distressed by that pain and uh, that uh, that is how we have to also learn from what is happening then when the night had advanced 700 de devtas belonging to satu lapa uh, host of stunning beauty 
eliminating the entire madha madha kuchi uh, deer park approached the blessed one having approached they paid homage to the blessed one and stood to one side then one devata standing to one side uttered this inspirational utterance in the presence of the blessed one the ascetic gotama is indeed a naga sir so now uh, they uh, they said uh, uh, first kind of uh, uh, utterance which is inspired at utterances uh, are mentioned in many of the sutras so for the first thing says he is a naga so you remember that our uh, sharing of mother uh, uh, merits also have the word naga so naga is one designation for an arahant so that that is also over here uh, apparent that the, the what they are saying is he is a naga so uh, what they are referring to is as a arahant and when bodily feeling has uh, have arisen there are painful racking sharp piercing harrowing disagreeable though the, his naga like manner he endures them mindful and clearly comprehending without uh, becoming distressed now i'll i just uh, read a little bit about the uh, uh, explanation given by bikhu bodhi about the various uh, uh, kind of uh, 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 similes given uh, for the buddha so over here it is uh, spoken is that uh, he is called a naga on account of his strength a lion on account of his fearlessness a thoroughbred on account of his familiarity with what he has learned or because he knows what is right means and the wrong means that is a reason he is called a thoroughbred a chief bull because he is without a rival a beast of burden because he because of bearing the burden tamed because he is free from deviant conduct so these are the uh, kind of uh, similes given uh, for the buddha then another devata uttered uh, this inspire, inspired utterance in the presence of the blessed one the ascetic gotama is indeed a lion sir and when bodily feeling have arisen that are painful racking sharp piercing harrowing this agreeable though though his uh, lion and uh, manner he endures them mindful and clearly comprehending without becoming distressed then another devata uttered this inspired utterance in the presence of the blessed one the ascetic gotama is indeed a thoroughbred sir and when bodily feeling have arisen that are painful disagreeable to his thoroughbred manner he endures them mindful and clearly comprehending without becoming distressed then another devata uttered this inspired utterance in the present of the blessed one the ascetic gotama is indeed a chief bull sir and when bodily feeling have arisen that are painful disagreeable though his chief bull's manner he endures them mindful clearly comprehending without becoming distressed then another devata utters this inspired utterance in the presence of the blessed one the ascetic gotama is indeed a beast of burden sir and when bodily feeling have arisen there are painful disagreeable through his beast of burdens nature manner he endures them mindful and clearly comprehending without becoming distressed then another devata uttered this inspired utterance in the presence of the blessed one the ascetic gotama is indeed tamed sir and one bodily feeling has arisen that are painful racking sharp piercing harrowing disagreeable through his tamed manner he endures them mindful and clearly comprehending without becoming distressed so these are the uh, kind of uh, uh, praise uh, the uh, devatas gives and the, uh, it is mentioned that uh, the 700 devatas which have come Uh, there were uh, the total number of devtas in that heavenly realm had come to uh, see the buddha so this is the <coughs> sorry this is the uh, uh, most important uh, 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 kind of praise uh, of the buddha which is given then another devta turned this inspired utterance in the presence of the blessed one see his concentration well developed 
and his mind well liberated, not bent forward and not bent back and not blocked and checked by forceful suppression. So now uh, they, uh, they are saying about his mind state. Uh, so over here, you uh, can, kind of uh, can recognize this is the same thing which uh, we are also saying in uh, to him. I'll read it once again. See his concentration well developed and his mind well liberated, not bent forward and not bent back. That means it is not too much uh, stressed and not too much relaxed. So it is in a balanced manner. Not blocked and checked by forceful suppression. So there is no forceful suppression of the hindrances which are arise, which uh, may arise, uh, but there is no force applied to that. So that means that there is, uh, you should not fight with what has come up but you have to be balanced. It is, it is not blocked and checked by forceful su suppression. If anyone would think uh, such a one would be violated, such a naga of a man, such a lion of a man, such a thoroughbred of a man, such a chief bull of a man, such a beast of burden of a man, such a tamed man, what is due to apart that lack of vision? So this is uh, an... Um, kind of uh, uh, verse they uh, now kind of uh, say is uh, uh, clarified by Mikubodhi is that he is not sure how it may be a later part added to this uh, sutta but this is the verse which has been said uh, though Brahmins learned in five Vedas practice austerities for a hundred years their minds are not to, uh, rightly liberated those of low nature do not reach uh, the far shore. So Vikhavadi mentions that this may be kind of a later addition, but this is the, uh, what they are saying is that uh, if you are not practicing in a correct manner, even uh, if you are uh, practicing for 100 years, you will not get uh, uh, awakened or liberated. They founder in craving about in woes and rules. So that means that uh, just by following some rites and rituals, uh, one cannot uh, progress. Practicing uh, rogue austerity for a hundred years, but their minds are not rightly liberated. It also means that by doing a lot of effort, you cannot uh, attain uh, liberation means that effort by effort itself is not uh, required. Some may require more effort, some may require less effort, but that means that you have to balance yourself. How much you have uh, to put effort would depend on how, what are the situation you are currently in. Say uh, somebody is uh, naturally uh, uh, restless, okay? So now uh, what happens is you cannot put any more energy in your uh, meditation. You have to kind of take away your energy. That means that you have to relax the more. And say somebody has a uh, sloth and torpor as a nature, then uh, he cannot relax. He has to put in more energy to be in balance. So the energy required means the energy is required to balance what you are uh, in uh, the position where, where you start. It, uh, it depends on how much uh, energy you put or how much energy you take out. So by relaxing, you take out the energy by uh, taking more interest. Uh, you put in more energy. So when you are uh, having sloth and proper, uh, Bhante Vimal Ramsey advises to take more interest, smile more. So that is how you kind of put in more energy into your uh, practice. When you are uh, uh, getting restless, then you uh, relax more, smile more and try and take away the energy. So in that way, uh, just by putting a, a lot of energy, that is uh, uh, asteroids which are very tough, you will not be able to progress. There is no taming here for one found of conceit, nor is there a sagehood for the un- uh, concentrated. So uh, what they are saying is that uh, you need to have uh, your collected mind also that is Samatha and Vipassana are both required to progress. 
those dwelling alone in the for, uh, forest heedless one cannot cross beyond the realm of that so this is also mentioning that if even if you are staying in a forest and uh, staying a kind of a pious life but still you will not be able to progress unless you are doing it in a right manner you have to do it in a balanced manner uh, and uh, that will uh, uh, enable you to progress having a abandoned conceit well concentrated with lofty mind everywhere released while dwelling alone in the forest diligent one can cross beyond the realm of death so you have to uh, abandon your conceit and you have to be uh, well uh, collected in your mind with lofty mind else everywhere released while dwelling alone in the forest a forest diligent one can cross beyond the death beyond the realm of that that is one can uh, when uh, uh, practice is done in a balanced manner can cross now one other uh, uh, reference i have given that reference is of angutra nikaya this is from uh, samyutta nikaya angutra nikaya also this same uh, kind of uh, mention of the concentration has been uh, given uh, so this is uh angutra nikaya uh, book of 3 101 so it will be a 3.101 uh, angutra nikaya so over here I, I, this is the third uh, uh, point in that so i'll read uh, but because there comes a time when his mind becomes internally steady composed unified and concentrated that concentration is peaceful and sublime gained by full tranquilization and attained to unification it is not reined in and checked by forcefully suppressing in brackets it is defilements then there being a suitable basis he is capable of realizing any state realizable by direct knowledge towards which he might incline his mind so over here also uh, uh, the same uh, process uh, or uh, the state of mind has been explained which uh, bandhe women ramsi is kind of uh, encouraging us to be in uh, it is said that the bhikkhu here comes to a, a time when his mind becomes internally steady composed unified and collected that uh, uh, the collected state of mind that samadhi which is there uh, samta which is there is peaceful and sublime gained by tranquilization and attained to unification so it is uh, by relaxation that mind has been uh, collected that is unified unification it is reined in and it is not reined in and checked by forcefully suppressing the defilements again over here uh, it has been mentioned that it has been reined in and uh, it has not been reined and checked in by forceful for uh, forcing the defilements so again what buddha uh, like uh, bante vimaram si says is that uh, the hindrances are not our enemies Our hindrances are our friends because it tells us where our attachments lie. So we come to know about our attachments and our uh, uh, attractions, or where we kind of uh, get uh, uh, attracted to by uh, 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 understanding the hindrances which are coming. So we do not uh, fight them, but we try and understand them. By we are understanding them, we can uh, get over them. so that is a, a kind of uh, explanation of the mental state which is kind of what we are also trying to get uh, at the practice with twin and six are also is kind of encouraging us to be uh, first is uh, when you recognize you release you do not fight with a hindrance you when you recognize a hindrance you release it and you relax and then you smile and return and then repeat when needed so that that process itself 
tranquilizes our mind and body and helps us progress in our meditation. So then there being a suitable basis, that means that uh, the causes and conditions also have to be suitable. He is capable of realizing any state uh, re uh, realizable by direct knowledge towards which he might incline his mind. So one example uh, Buddha gives in one of the suttas is that uh, if a uh, uh, kind of a, uh, a vessel or a jar is full of water, wherever it is inclined, the water will fall from there. So if it is uh, filled, filled to the brim, if you incline it over here, the water will find over here. If you incline it over here, it will fall over here. So wherever you incline your mind, there you can take the mind. So one is uh, that uh, state, when you are reaching the state of uh, fourth jhana, at that point of time, uh, there are certain uh, people who are interested or inclined towards uh, psychic uh, abilities or uh, uh, developing uh, past life uh, uh, knowledge. So that is possible at that point of time. But uh, as we are more in, uh, inclined, Bhante Vimal Ramsi is more inclined towards uh, the release, <clears throat> towards the cessation aspect of the meditation. That is the reason uh, he also gives this symbol uh, when he is uh, taking photos now, he is kind of uh, 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 explaining us uh, that see the, uh, the Buddha whenever he is uh, doing the teaching this would be he is teaching the first noble truth if this is the symbol you see in the uh, uh, Buddha image he is teaching our the second noble truth if this is the Im uh, 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 image then that is he is teaching the cessation and if he is teaching uh, uh, the fingers are like this or something like this he is teaching about the path, that is the eightfold path. So uh, we are more inclined towards uh, the cessation aspect and going towards the uh, uh, higher uh, Arupa Jana. So after that, what we are encouraging our uh, students who are practicing is then you to go to the Arupa Janas, infinite space, infinite consciousness, nothingness, neither perception or non-perception and towards cessation. So that is how we are uh, training and that is what uh, the Buddha is also saying that that is how one should kind of train. So this is uh, uh, the short uh, explanation of the suttas and uh, if uh, there is any questions I can uh, take questions. Yes. Okay, one question. Yes. Uh, this is not related to what you taught now. No I just want to know uh, where are the original suttas kept? Is it still available in Pali canon? What was written earlier? See, uh, there are, I think, uh, uh, monasteries in uh, Sri Lanka which uh, have a basic uh, kind of uh, 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 preservation of the uh, Tipitaka, is their uh, kind of goal, basic goal. And then uh, there, there, uh, there is in uh, Burma some uh, place where they have kept it in uh, stone uh, uh, tablets. There are big stone tablets, like uh, maybe five feet uh, or something like that. There are big stone tablets where uh, in Burmese script they have uh, put in the uh, Tipitaka. So they have uh, found those. Uh, and in Burma also there are monasteries which are dedicated to keep the uh, Tipitaka alive. And then there are uh, one way of uh, doing it is by memorization. So uh, uh, there are monks who memorize the whole of Tipitaka. So they are called Vivamsa, I think so, if I remember correctly. So uh, they have to do an exam. That exam, I think, uh, last, I think, 15 days or a month where uh, uh, you uh, the monk will come and uh, uh, the uh, whoever is uh, taking the exam, they will ask uh, this sutta, uh, this uh, verse, uh, you start from the middle or anywhere and the person has to start directly from wherever uh, they ask. And they get three chances to uh, make three mistakes. If they make th the third mistake, then uh, they, they, that exam is over. 
so in a, a, a examination which may last for say 15 days uh, he, they will be asking from all the suttas and to uh, ensure that the person has totally memorized the uh, sutta so that is one way of doing it that was traditionally done uh, full memorization of the uh, tipitaka then uh, in uh, uh, whatever form uh, the uh, the it was kind of written like in uh, uh, leaves it was written and those are uh, kind of preserved uh, in uh, uh, sri lanka there are monasteries which do that and uh, they also kind of uh, uh, transcribe or uh, write those uh, same thing and put it in a fresh format and then they save it then uh, currently as printing technology is there uh, there, there is a kind of a, uh, uh, the whole collection of tipitaka uh, can be uh, given as a uh, you can purchase it as a uh, printed copy and they also uh, uh, kind of present it to monasteries and that way they will have multiple copies of that uh, for uh, future generations to preserve <laughs> that is how it is done Okay. Any other question? Anything uh, uh, related to the sutta or uh, any other thing also you can ask? Yes. Uh, Bante, out of curiosity, how did the Chinese Nikayas originate from? I think uh, there was a, uh, uh, in the uh, time of Ashoka, there was a uh, uh, there was a traveler and uh, who had come to India, and uh, he was a scholar, and uh, he came to India and I think he, he uh, came to Nalanda, and uh, uh, he wanted to learn. And then uh, Nalanda, when we went to Nalanda with Bante Vimalram C and his sister came on, uh, the guide told us that there were kind of four gates in Nalanda. And they were mined, manned by uh, the uh, scholars, uh, one of the professors over there would man the uh, gate. And whenever somebody would come, they would interview the person. And uh, they would interview the person and uh, uh, admit him to the uh, university. So uh, what happened was that this uh, uh, wanderer uh, from China who came, uh, they were kind of very impressed by his uh, coming from such a long space. Uh, and then uh, they uh, kind of admitted him immediately and he was kind of exceptional uh, in memory. Uh, so he could uh, memorize the whole of Tipitaka and he kind of uh, excelled at uh, 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 the learning of the uh, Tipitaka and then later on he uh, took uh, that knowledge uh, and uh, went back to China. And uh, there is also uh, uh, many uh, later uh, also after him, there were uh, uh, Chinese scholars who traveled to Nalanda. That was uh, 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 maybe a thousand years or uh, 500 years back after this incident. Also, there were uh, scholars who, were, who used to come. And regularly, uh, there were uh, many scholars from many countries who would come uh, to Nalanda and uh, learn uh, about the Tipitaka. So by that, uh, this is uh, th that has been saved, and uh, I don't remember the exact name of the scholar, but uh, I think Bodhi Dhamma. Bodhi Dhamma. Bodhi Dhamma. Bodhi Dhamma. Bodhi Dhamma uh, in the seventh century. Seventh century Bodhi Dhamma. Uh, I think this is before that. This is mentioned by uh, uh, I think uh, Goenkaji also mentions about. Uh, no, no. was there. At the time of Buddha, uh, huh. uh, the Asoka Takshasila, Nalanda started somewhere in 5th century AD. Uh -huh. So maybe I am I am confusing that. Uh, but uh, in the time of uh, the Ashoka, the scholar had come. That is uh, that is the reason that is more kind of authentic, because it is more closer to the time where uh, the original teaching were more fresh. Uh, and then uh, that at the time of Ashoka, uh, Yuan, so, Yuan uh, Song, Yuan huh? Song, huh? Yuan Song. Okay, <laughs> I don't. Uh, His I name don't is know. Yuan Song. Somewhere uh, in BC, he came to India. Huh. Chinese traveler. Huh. 
so that that is a, a traveler who had come and uh, but uh, it it bhukhu uh, bodhi is currently i think staying i think for a decade or so he's staying in a chinese uh, monastery and he's studying that and that is dhamma uh, dhamma bodhi dhamma bodhi went away to china uh -huh. from india no i am talking about bhikkhu bodhi bhikkhu bodhi bhikkhu. is uh, in uh, america uh, oh. he is staying in a chinese monastery i think for now. almost 20 years or something like that no no now now mm. and uh, bhikkhu bodhi uh, is also studying that chinese uh, tipitaka and this chinese tipitaka uh, study uh, for academic is kind of growing uh, currently because cross reference is very important in uh, knowing and if you uh, uh, kind of uh, read his uh, comments, Bhikkhu Bodhi's comments, if you have uh, Kindle uh, versions of uh, Majjima Nikaya or uh, any other uh, like uh, Samyutta Nikaya, then you will find that uh, when he has uh, referenced, uh, currently when I, I see, I think they must be updating. Uh, previously, it was not mentioned uh, that much. But currently, I see that he always uh, kind of uh, mentions that Chinese Tipitaka, and uh, he mentions that this uh, symbol has been used, and uh, that has to be kind of considered uh, 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 that uh, when he uses one word uh, other than other uh, a, a substitute, and he says that this may be a, a, a scribe's error. So it may be kind of an error while uh, kind of copying this uh, sutta. So uh, uh, for that, he has to give a kind of a very solid justification why he is uh, using this word as this or not like that. So there are many translations which are there. Uh, so he kind of uh, accumulates all those uh, things at one point and reference, cross references it. So that is the reason it is very important now. Any other questions? I think we got it uh, everything. Huh? <laughs> okay. Then we'll uh, close it uh, now with sharing of merit. May suffering once be suffering free, and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief, and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty power, share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation. Sabu, sabu. Everybody, thank you for coming. And I think Wednesday, Sister Kema will join us. He, she's there back uh, in Ulas Naga. So uh, next Wednesday. <laughs> thank, okay. you, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.